we're being asked to believe almost mm -hmm. that the bullets came through John in a direct line of fire and then somehow three of them dive bombed with a revolver. So this is not an automatic, so it's bang, yeah, bang, yeah. bang. How would he not move? I think Mark Chapman was potentially shooting a gun or thinking he was shooting a gun, possibly blanks, possibly not. It was highly likely there was a second shooter. The exact circumstances of John Lennon's death over 40 years ago have been widely debated. Now, this man, TV producer and writer David Whelan, says he is certain the man who was jailed in 1981 for the murder couldn't possibly have done it. And he's got the evidence to back it up. And do you think we'll ever know the truth about uh, who shot John Lennon? No. Thanks for clicking on this video. For more like this from the Daily Mail, make sure you hit subscribe. The cries of the crowd grow with pitched volume, drowning out the whine of the jet engine. And here they are, fresh from their triumphant appearances in the United States. In a world before Instagram and even the internet, where mobile phones didn't really exist commercially until after they'd broken up, and even then made calls and nothing else, the Beatles were a global phenomenon. And when John Lennon was shot and killed outside his home overlooking Central Park in New York in December 1980, his death sent shockwaves around the world. Now, after a three-year investigation into the murder, a series of extraordinary inconsistencies have been unearthed, including the suggestion that detectives may have fundamentally misunderstood how the shooting happened. David Whelan has unearthed a trove of documents relating to the killing, including seen here for the very first time, gunman Mark Chapman's hit list. As well as the former Beatle, it also features Marlon Brando, considered one of the most influential actors of the 20th century, and former First Lady Jackie Kennedy Anassis. Whelan has also been able to analyse in great detail the original notebooks from the lead detective in the case, Ron Hoffman. And intriguingly, Whelan's research into the former Beatles' death has raised a series of troubling questions about exactly how the killing was carried out and why. The prosecution's version of events accepted by the courts was that disturbed loner Chapman lay in wait for Lennon and shot five times four of the bullets hitting his victim in the back. But this now appears to be riddled with contradictions. Mark Chapman has always stated from the day he was arrested to now that he shot John four times in the back. It's almost certain that John was shot in the front. From where John was and where Mark Chapman was, from all evidence and all witness statements, it's almost impossible for Mark Chapman to shoot John four times in the upper left chest area with three passing out in a direct line of fire. The postmortem's never been released because mm. Yoko, for privacy reasons, doesn't want to release it. There's a couple of conflicting things about the postmortem. At the press conference that Elliot Gross gave, he intimated that John was shot two times in the back and two times in the left shoulder, which is where I think the John was shot in the back sort of legend mm. was cemented. But if you look at a death certificate that can be found online, which isn't verified by the way, but it looks pretty authentic to me, it says that John was shot in the chest. And that came from Elliot Gross as well. Whelan points to first-hand witness statements by the surgeon and two nurses who worked on Lennon, all of whom state unequivocally that he was shot four times in his upper chest from the front. It's like a rugby scrum, uh, several nurses and anesthetists that's putting a tube in his throat for his debris for him, uh, people cutting off his clothes. I always thought he was shot in the front, shot four times with three exit wounds in the back. I have to maintain that it was, he was shot in the chest. I can't change what I said I knew to be true. Yet retired NYPD lead detective Ron Hoffman in another phone interview claims that is impossible. He was walking towards the vestibule. Chapman stepped between him and Yoko and shot him. Now I'm not exactly sure how many feet away he shot him from. I don't think it was more than maybe 10 feet. Oh, he was definitely shot in the back. Yeah, sure. He is, he was the lead detective, so he is the main guy to go to when you want to try and figure out what happened in the investigation and whether the investigation was done properly. Going through the notebooks, there's a lot of interviews which are very useful, so you can figure out what people saw and, and what happened to that point. A lot of conflicting testimony, but what I don't see is any forensics. I don't see any deep insight into what happened on the ground. When you actually put them all together, 
it, it doesn't add up and, it, and for me it should add up. These discrepancies are a huge concern to Whelan who is now sure authorities got the wrong man. Almost 100% certain that Mark didn't cause the fatal wounds that John, John, John had that night and that killed John Lennon because of where he was placed and where John was struck. You have to start to wonder whether Mark Chapman was under some kind of uh, grooming, programming, where he was influenced by actors unknown to go to the Dakota and believe he was doing something that I don't think he could feasibly do. Mr. Whelan alleges that key information surrounding the murder was hushed up by the NYPD and the district attorney's office, including 122 unidentified pills found in Chapman's hotel room. He also points out that not a single witness, including Yoko Ono, saw Lennon being shot by Chapman. She has never said that she saw Mark Chapman shoot her husband. And she's also crucially never said that she heard Mark Chapman call out to her husband. She generally says that they exited the limo, they walked towards the glass festival doors, and when they got to the glass doors, John said he was shot and he staggered in. In Ron Hoffman's, in the detective's notebooks, mm. all Ron says is, the doorman saw everything, Chapman did it. It was Christmas coming up. I think they'd had a hard year from the cops that I've spoken to in the department and it seems what they call a grounder. It was just kind of all there. It was straightforward. The guy admitted it. Mm. The gun was kind of near him, even though it was not on him at the time. Mm. What's there to do? I think Mark Chapman was potentially shooting a gun or thinking he was shooting a gun, possibly blanks, possibly not. I think Mark Chapman thinks he's done something he couldn't have possibly have done, therefore, the only conclusion I can come to is there might have been a second shooter, or it was highly likely there was a second shooter in the vestibule area, on the stairs, shooting John in a close group pattern in his upper left chest area. When I spoke to the doctors and nurses at the time who treated John and they saw his wounds many times, they all agree that whoever shot John was very close to him and standing in front one or two feet away. And they managed to achieve a very professional grouping above John's left chest area, above his heart. It's almost impossible for Mark Chapman to do that from where he was. And it was dark. He was 20, 25 feet away from John. It's a disturbing, troubling assessment. I'm well aware of that, but I can see no other way John's wounds can be achieved. As crazy as it sounds to me, and I've, I've gone through all the evidence, and I've been studying this case now for three years, and I've pretty much spoken to everybody connected to it by Yoko Ono, it's the only thing that makes sense to me. It's the only feasible theory, and I'm, I'm aware of how seismic that statement is. For more true crime content like this, hit like and subscribe.